Hello, this is Daniel and welcome to the very first part of the character modeling series. So, in this part we're going to start from the very, very scratch, just from the character sheet that you can of course download from the link below in the description. And from there on we'll yeah, build this whole project up until we have the very finished character. So I assume this is going to be a very um, long tutorial series with lots of parts and you're free of course to, to stick with the series and um, work along. So I'm of course providing all the materials we use uh, in this description whenever there is something new you will be able to find it. Uh, just keep that in mind and other than that I don't think there is much more to say. Um, and Let's just start with it. So I'm now using Blender. Um, I just opened the new scene in Blender. Um, you may have the cube still there and the lamp, you know, you can just delete those. And <clears throat> here on the side, you can start by loading in the background image. Now let's add an image and I will uh, very quickly get my character sheet in. Now you will be able to see it once you're in the side view in autographic mode. Um, by the way, let me very quick turn on the keys so you can see here. Yeah. Um, let me say one more thing before we start with the modeling. Um, I hope you're all right with it, uh, with me not saying every single shortcut that I'm going to use because um, yeah, it would be a bit, it would be just too much for, for these videos if it would say, uh, tell you about every little detail. So I hope you can um, live with that and yeah, anyways, let's, let's continue with our work. So first of all, we need to make sure that our reference um, matches our views. So up here you can see which view we are in. So I'm going to uh, set my view to front and make sure that this front view is in the center. I can do that by changing this X um, while you're here and that seems all right. I'm going to focus for now on the face and make sure that the face is in the middle. It's not so important if that's a bit off here. We're going to get to that later on. Now I'm going to view that from the side but we want the character to be in the middle. It wouldn't matter so much but just to work clean. So I'm going to say that this one is just visible from the front, so it's disappeared here in the right view. Then I'm going to add a new image, say it's the same, and set that to right as well. Now, as I said, we're going to start with the face. And <clears throat> normally you'd, you know, do some planning on topology, but um, I've modeled a few faces and I feel more comfortable just doing it. Um, from my mind and yeah just come up with the structures and I go uh, um, yeah so so what I did now is I created a new object it, anyone uh, any object is fine go into edit mode and delete all the vertices in there so you have an empty object and you're in edit mode and then with control click create a new vertex somewhere around the eye because that's where we're going to start um, now add a modifier very quickly, the mirror one, and make sure that this icon is clicked just so you can see them even if it's not a face yet or something. And activate clipping so that once you move them together they merge nicely. So that's actually all there is to do. We're all uh, set up. Oh, one thing I forgot, of course we have to adjust this second image here. Um, just move it a little bit to the left and yeah, that should be right. We don't need to do anything accurate from this view. All right, so let's start with the eyes. Um, for this, just start by following this eye outline. Um, you can select this vertex and extrude it. Try to um, work with about the same density of vertices you shouldn't have too much more of them, but also not much less of those because um, you will have 
difficulties to still have an overview or you will have not enough vortices to manage putting all the detail in there. So of course it's not very accurate right now but um, the way I model and I like to work is just putting down um, the things and start doing something and later on uh, going back and fixing vortices to make it look better. So you have to live with the fact that when you work with drawings it is very really probable that they won't um, match up so well, even though they do pretty well here. I'm actually surprised by that. Um, but what you have to make sure is that you rely on one information mainly. So I think the front view is more accurate, for example, and I'm going to make sure that the position of the vertex is correct from the front view. And then I'm just going to uh, modify um, along the y-axis here. So even though it could be maybe a bit higher or a bit lower or something like that, I'm not going to touch any of it. Um, by the way, I transform um, everything, uh, or no, I, I move around those vertices with G and then I lock not by clicking on Y, as you could also do. I use the middle mouse instead. And depending on which direction my mouse uh, currently moves, or where it is on the screen, it will lock to a different direction. It, this just speeds up your workflow a little bit if you're interested in such <coughs> advices. So let's finish this outline. You, I also like viewing it from the top um, to check a few things. Um, of course it's hard to, to tell if that position is right, but since I modeled a few of those characters, I know a little bit about how it should look from the top and that's about the shape you want to go for. So the lower one should be a little bit more inside of the head than the upper one. At least that's how I um, how I think it is. So now you have this. Let's at this point add a subdivision surface modifier <coughs> and continue the work from here. The reason why I, I um, add the modifier already here is because I always want to work with um, a representative mesh. So we have all the smoothing already here and we can't do too much wrong. So I'm extruding this entire thing now and adjusting the vertices again. We just want this time a rather even circle about around this area here. Um, always make sure that everything is evenly spread out and that should do it I think we can always go back and adjust it you see it, it looks already pretty good actually uh, let's just adjust it a little bit from the side view so um, here let's move those a, bit, a little bit more to the front you see here it starts at the at the eyebrow we can also uh, use those informations from the side but always make uh, make sure to keep in mind that these are not any photographs these are just drawings and optimized for this specific view so you, you can never really re uh, rely on it so for example here this is where it uh, where the eyebrow this touches the eyebrow but i think this curve is a bit too much to the back um, you just have to add a little bit of your <coughs> of what you think will look better in these kind of situations. Uh, let's move on to here. Of course, you can also move things around without the reference. You don't always need to switch to one side to edit it. Um, and you will definitely get better over the time if you like doing this and you do it more often. Um, you will remember how things look, uh, how the topology should be, and it will get easier with the time. Um, so now to add more detail to the eye, I'm going to add a loop cut here, and then let's adjust this first actually. Let's just move these three a bit to the front, uh, smooth those a little bit. Uh, by the way, this Q is not the actual shortcut for this action. It's you can find it when you click W at smooth. Um, where is it? Smooth vertices. Oh, it's it's just smooth. Yeah, but I use it very often, so I changed the shortcut. I added a shortcut actually that is Q because that's I don't need it the uh, often. So 
that's what I use for I mean the original feature for Q. I think there is one but um, yeah I just use it for smoothing anyway so uh, down here just move those in a little bit I'll actually those a bit out again and here the same thing now you, uh, of course as always adjust things on the go just to keep everything as even as possible you don't want to have places where it is too dense and then other places where it is not as dense so actually I'm going to add a new one a new loop in here to fix this problem and that should be all right okay now let's very quickly extrude this inwards as well just to give the eye a bit of a better shape and now one more in here uh, which go a bit like that to create that eye line now this is one of the parts that do change the look of the character so be careful with that to actually um, match it the, the way the character looks um, you can always make it the way you like it you don't have to stick with the reference or anything just find something you're happy with um, at this stage you can also set it to smooth shading in object mode and if you have artifacts like that just select the entire thing and use control N to recalculate the normals that will fix the problem now let's continue to correct that that was not so good I think um, yeah, and, and as I said already, the more you work with characters, the better you'll get at it, the more you will remember the shapes. And also one thing I really recommend you, if you're really into this and you want to get better at it, I would say um, start drawing, because that uh, makes you very aware of all those little details. And it helps more than you might imagine, at least that's what I think. Um, um, as for me, I, I started about a year ago, and it really doesn't take so long to get better at drawing. I was really, I couldn't draw at all, or at least I thought so, about a year ago, and now I'm about at this uh, skill, you know, the, the character sheet, I drew that one actually. So it's still not very good, I mean, uh, it could be much, much, much more, uh, much, much better, but, you know, for... Uh, for someone who has just started drawing about a year ago, that's actually pretty good, I think at least. So, um, and and while I I drew these reference, uh, not only the reference, but gen generally, um, while I was drawing, I think I learned to pay much more attention to, um, yeah, all those things you can see on characters. And yeah, I think it helped me in the end to get better at this. So now I'm going to connect this bridge here in the middle and try now to make it without the reference look better because I don't think the references were good at this at this point uh, what you want to make sure is that uh, viewing the image from this from the side this um, line this country should be very close to what it will be in the end so I'm actually going to follow that one along very quickly because um, a country is always very important for the look um, much more than the actual shape or at least in some way um, yes yeah, so I'm just making sure that we will at least stick to the reference uh, with a certain amount of accuracy by doing this right away will definitely change the positions of those later on but you know these are just placeholders to also give us a better idea of how it looks when we just look around it like that <coughs> let's move these ones out a little bit again and from the side a little bit more back to make this more even and that looks all right i think <coughs> some adjustments here and there until you're happy with it um, not sure if that's fine yet but you know once we're uh, once we get further with the model um, 
we'll find out more and more about what looks good and what doesn't look so good. Um, just for viewing purposes, I'm going to change this uh, value to something around 100, just so it doesn't get so distorted in perspective mode, even though that's what it's good for. Um, yeah, and now let's continue the work. Um, yeah. Now, yeah, let's let's just follow this flow and work our ways to the nose. Um, from here on, it's it's all pretty much the same. I'm going to continue to talk and explain all the details, but just so you know, the the general idea behind um, all all this is that you just you just have to to <laughs> i think the hard thing about modeling is mainly to interpret the drawings or the references as good as possible and to get it into 3d space um, and that's the job of a 3d modeler i would say or at least that's what we're trying to to learn here in this video um, I think as long as you're not a sculptor or something, it's really hard with polygon modeling to uh, be very creative in, in what you model because you're very bound to to your references. It's hard to, to um, have much control over the model when you do it this way. That's why we try to start off from a good reference and stick with it as good as we can. <clears throat> now I think um, this is enough for the first part. Uh, let's delete this to have it clean. We have now the eye section um, set up um, to be corrected later on so we can add more detail and stuff. And we have the contour from the side view. And we have started to create the nose. So I think that's all we'll do for today. I hope um, this amount of time approximately for each tutorial is not too less and not too much for you to follow so I hope that with this you can just watch one part a day or something like that and follow along and you know just yeah. let's just um, stop here and I'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching